understand that one can still have ostentation, right, which is riya, it's a disease of the heart where you show off, right, you're, you're performing, basically, in order for it to be seen. Um, uh, that, that we can have ostentation when people purposely go out of their way to not look boastful. Do you still have ostentation if you go out of your way to not look too good around certain people? Uh, an example is where basically wearing a mask around men or purposely dress and purposely dress with not the best attire around certain people out of fear of judgment or being seen by them. So the question again that I'm hearing here is, is it still Riyya if you're trying to basically, you know, kind of tone down your dress um, uh, so as not to attract uh, or to appear a certain way, right, to whether it's men or, or other uh, people? And uh, so I, I feel like this question, I just again can speak to it because many, many years ago, before I even knew what the term ostentation was, which is like a, you know, it's a mouthful of a word, um, or Riyya, we, I had to study the diseases of the heart. I absolutely had it, I just didn't know I had it. But a big part of my focus was on the outward. And so wearing a certain clothes to not be perceived uh, you know, as, as attractive or, or just to look intimidating was absolutely my game. I went out of the house with the agenda to intimidate people, to look scary, to not be judged um, you know, for, for, for any physicality or anything else, um, and to send a message, a strong message. Um, and I thought that that was, you know, something pious. I actually believed that it was an act of piety to do that. And I've told the story before, but I don't know how many of you have heard it, so I'll just quickly tell it because I think, it, for me, it was a life-changing moment for me, and it just made me, it helped me to shift focus. But I've told the story, so if you've heard it, you can leave if you want. <laughs> but I don't want to. Uh, anyhow, I was. This was many years ago, and so as I mentioned, I used to dress like all uh, kind of military style in a way, uh, head to toe black, and I would walk around. Um, with like a grimace and just like not be very pleasant because uh, I wanted to intimidate people. So I was at the airport waiting for a ride and this, um, you know, I'm just sitting there, people watching, waiting for my ride, dressed again, head to toe like that. And a woman, she parks her car right across the street. I mean, uh, on the, you know, in the, in the, where, where all the cars are coming. And she parked her car and then she got, got out of her car and she's wearing a tank top and shorts. And she's a you know white I mean, I'm assuming white American woman, but she um, she was dressed very scantily, and I just immediately just judged her and had a lot of negative thoughts. Let's just say, um, completely judged her. And this happened to me. She closed the trunk of her car and she looked right in my direction as if she was piercing through my soul. And you know, you make eye contact with somebody who you're just judging, you know that's not comfortable, uh, if you've ever done that before. But she did that, and then she walked directly towards me. And so as she's walking towards me, my heart is like, you know, because I'm like, what is this? This is kind of strange. Why is she coming towards me? And wallahi, she did this. She came and she stood in her tank top and short shorts, and I'm sitting there, and she, she put her head down, and she said, Assalamu alaikum. Um, last words I ever thought I would hear from someone dressed like that. And she had so much humility. I actually, she had her head hand the, 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 low the whole time, pretty much she was talking to me. She's like, I know I'm dressed so um, inappropriately, but I am Muslim and um, I want to raise my son Muslim. And I saw you and I thought it was like a sign from God that I come and talk to you because um, I want uh, books. She's like, I need resources for my son. So she's saying all this stuff. And I'm just sitting there like completely floored at what just happened because I know the internal dialogue I was having in my head. And of course, Allah knows what I was thinking. And he sent this woman to me. He sent her to me to teach me a very, very serious lesson that day, which is who do you think you are, right? You're walking around as though you are the personification of my faith and you judge people and you think you're better than people. And that's who I was for a really long time. And that day I learned the lesson, I am nobody. Because that woman, I'm sure, was, was far better than I was in that moment. And I, I had to sit with that. It was like a, um, I say it was, it was like a punch to, to the gut. It was, but it was a huge awakening for me that my focus was on the wrong thing. I was focused on the outward. So Riya is a disease of the heart where in both cases, where you do something to be seen or you don't do something to not be seen, it is Riyah because the focus is on people. 
our focus has to be on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't act for, for to be seen or to not be seen, to be judged, to not be judged, to be accepted, to not be accepted. That is not the state of the believer because people can't benefit you and they can't harm you. Everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the believer understands that and that's why if you're going to dress a certain way, do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't factor in people. Do it for the sake of Allah and he will give you tawfiq inshallah.